Okay, so in this lecture we are going to look at a few examples where we apply the techniques which we developed for solve, we solve the Laplace equation uh, in spherical coordinates. So when problems which uh, you know have, have spherical symmetry inbuilt into their boundary conditions, then uh, the method that we develop is going to be applicable. So we are going to solve some examples in this lecture. Okay, these examples are, are taken from uh, David Griffith's electrodynamics textbook. There are many interesting problems uh, you know, around this topic. So interested readers can consult this book and other books also have similar examples as well. Okay, so let's start with this uh, problem where you are given a hollow sphere of radius r and the potential on the surface of this sphere is specified v0 of theta and we will work out one specific uh, case of this v0 of theta which is k times sin squared of theta by 2 uh, after we have solved this problem. Our go goal is to solve for the potential inside the sphere. So it is really a Dirichlet problem. This, the boundary conditions on the surface is given to us and we must find the, uh, the, the potential within the sphere. And since the potential is dependent only on, on theta, so the, uh, our solution is also going to be independent of you know, the, uh, the angle phi as we have seen. So the solution is going to be of this form. There is going to be this radial part which has you know, terms of the kind r to the l and 1 over r to the l plus 1 and uh, PL of cosine theta comes from the angular part. You know, we uh, combine these two together and allow, uh, you know, all possible uh, values of L. L goes from 0 all the way up to infinity. So first up, we argue that in this particular problem for when we are looking for solution within the, in, in the interior of, of this sphere, BLs, all, all of them have to go to 0 because uh, otherwise at R equal to 0 at the origin, the potential is going to blow up which would be unphysical. So right away we can remove all these coefficients B L and we are left with this uh, expansion V of R comma theta is equal to summation over L, A L R to the L B P L of cosine theta and our job is to compute these coefficients A L. Now we are given the boundary condition which is that when you put small r is equal to capital R, this infinite series expansion must go to V naught of theta for all values of theta, right. So a little uh, thought here you know, you know, uh, uh, reveals that in fact what is happening is we are expanding this function v0 of theta in terms of Legendre polynomials, right. So the Legendre polynomials form a basis and so this is a legitimate expansion and so in order to compute these coefficients AL we use a trick which is like the Fourier trick and so here I mean really what is going on is we are making use of the orthogonality property of Legendre polynomials which you will recall has this form, right. So if you take any two Legendre polynomials of different degrees, multiply them and integrate from minus 1 to 1, if their degrees are different, then you are going to get uh, 0 basically, they are orthogonal to each other and if they are the same, I mean polynomials which are multiplied here, then you are going to get 2 divided by 2n plus 1, which we have worked out uh, from first principles in, in an earlier uh, discussion. Now we will simply use this result and so we can write e a l in, in this form, right. So, in, so we are really looking at a Legendre polynomial of cosine of theta. So here we have this sine theta d theta and the integral is from 0 to pi. But really if you just put cosine of theta is equal to x, you can rewrite this integral in terms of x as we will do now. So for this specific problem of interest when you put v, v naught of theta is equal to k times sine squared theta by 2, uh, you know it is uh, useful to write this. Uh, sine squared theta by uh, 2 as 1 minus cos theta and then we have uh, uh, 1 minus, so when you put cos theta is equal to x, uh, so you get 1 minus x times PL of x and then the sine theta will go away, sine theta d theta will give you dx and there is a minus sign which you get absorbed. You can check this and overall the integral will be just minus 1 to 1 and this stuff. And so now we argue that in fact since 1 minus x is a polynomial of degree 1, so whenever uh, L is greater than or equal to 2, right, so this integral is going to, going to vanish, right. So this comes from, you know, so the a basic property of, uh, you know, this orthogonal polynomials as we have discuss, uh, discussed, right. So a polynomial of whatever degree can be written in terms of, uh, you know, um, Legendre polynomials of that degree and below and then Legendre polynomials of different degrees are anyway orthogonal to each other, right. So this is the argument which you can go back and look up again. 
And so immediately we see that a l is going to be 0 for l greater than or equal to 2. So there is only a 0 and a 1 which we must evaluate which is very easy to do because we just plug in here and so you can check that a naught is just k by 2 and a 1 is minus k by 2 r, right. So check these integrals and then we are able to immediately write down the final answer which is v of r comma theta is equal to k by 2 times 1 minus r by r cosine of theta. You can try out other kinds of potentials v naught of theta and see what kind of answers you get. So now let us look at example 2 which is basically the same problem but trying to understand what happens to the potential outside of this hollow sphere. So you can think of you know this uh, the, the boundary conditions on the surface as, as one boundary condition which is given to us but also now we should uh, ensure that the potential for very large r must go to 0, right. So that is the you know physic, uh, physics which uh, ensure which which we have to impose onto this problem, right. So there is no there is no charges which are you know distributed far away and so therefore indeed uh, it would be un unphysical for this potential to be non-zero far away. So we are you know really that is also another boundary condition. One boundary condition is uh, you know the boundary condition which has been specified on the surface and then v of r must go to 0 for large r. So if that must happen then all these coefficients a l have to vanish in our expansion. So we are now going to look at a solution of this form where all these b l's are potentially uh, are there but none of the a l's uh, you know are allowed to be there. And so the boundary condition we must fit this to is that when small r is equal to capital R once again this expansion must go to v naught of theta. So now Again we invoke the orthogonality property, now the coefficients b l are given by 2 l plus 1 over 2 times r to the l plus 1 and then an integral which is similar integral as we had earlier will come up here now 0 to pi v naught of theta p l of cos theta sin theta d theta. So for the specific case k times sin square theta by 2 here we will get you know this stuff outside is a bit different but really inside it is all pretty much the same. And now you know you have to take care of these uh, outside factors and coefficients. If you do this carefully you will see that again only b0 and b1 are the only two uh, coefficients which will survive and they are given by kr by 2 and minus kr squared by 2. And you should check this and convince yourself that indeed the uh, potential v of r comma theta outside of the sphere is going to be given by this expression. So you see that when r becomes very large it is going to go to 0 and when r is equal to capital R the boundary condition holds and all you have to do is check that v of r comma theta satisfies Laplace equation and so basically this uniqueness theorem tells us that if you can find a solution which fits the boundary conditions, Dirichlet boundary conditions then for sure that is the solution. So there is a way to quickly directly check this once you have the final answer you must always check the boundary conditions and that it satisfies Laplace equation and then for sure you have got the correct answer. Okay, then we look at one more example. So here again it is a as, you know problem with spherical symmetry. So you are given a uh, you know metal sphere of radius r and it is placed in an otherwise uniform electric field which is a constant electric field whose direction we can take without loss of generality to be along z and our job is to find uh, the potential uh, you know outside of the sphere, right. We will come to you know what happens inside in a moment. So basically the, the sphere is an equal, the surface of the square is an equal potential. So we can just put that potential to be 0 here, right. So far away from the sphere, I mean you, you can put it to be some constant but you might as well take that constant to be 0, right. So you fix the 0 of the potential and then the potential everywhere else is fixed with respect to that. So we take that potential, constant potential here on the surface to be 0, far away from the sphere the potential is now not going to be 0 because you have an electric field which is going away all the way to infinity. So in fact you, you would have a potential which goes as minus e naught z very far away from the origin. So these are in fact the two boundary conditions. So v equal to 0 at uh, small r equal to capital R and v must go to minus e naught times r cos theta which is what z is for r much greater than r. So the solution you know which is of this general form in this form if you put the first boundary condition it implies that when you put 
small r equal to capital R, this must be equal to 0. Therefore, BL is equal to minus AL times R to the 2L plus 1. So, V of R comma theta is, you know, this is the expansion we have. So, uh, AL times R to the L, you know, minus capital R to the 2L plus 1 divided by R to the L plus 1. Then there is a PL of cosine of theta. Now, we have imposed one of the two boundary conditions. So, the other boundary condition is a, is a rather strong one. You will see that when you, it's straightforward to apply this. And in fact, the key point is that when R is very large, uh, you can only have something which goes as R cos theta. So, that means that only L equal to 1 is the only term which is allowable. Every If even one other term is present, then you are not going to get this. You are going to get other kinds of terms, which is not not acceptable for this and therefore immediately it forces AL to be 0 for all L other than L equal to 1. So, the only linear term must survive and that we know that it should also go to this particular form. So, you can immediately write down the answer V of R comma theta is equal to minus E naught times small r minus R cube divided by R square a whole times cos theta. Again, you can check that you know the boundary conditions hold and that it satisfies the Laplace equation and so this is the solution. So, we can ask what happens to the potential inside the, uh, the sphere in this case. So, the, you know one answer which sort of we can immediately guess is you know there is a entire surface which is at 0. If, if uh, the potential is 0 everywhere inside that is for sure it is satisfying Laplace equation and it the boundary conditions also hold. And if you can find one solution for a Dirichlet problem, then indeed that is the solution, right? So even by uh, just looking at the symmetry of the problem, you can argue that you know there's going to be accumulation of uh, a positive charge on one side of the sphere and negative charge on the other side of the sphere. Everywhere inside the sphere, the potential is just going to be zero. Okay, that is something you can argue just on physical grounds, but also from this sort of Dirichlet problem and uniqueness theorem angle as well. Okay. Thank you.